this video we're going to be tying the ISMO pupa. First thing we're going to do is start off with a quarter inch piece of balsa wood. If you can find round balsa wood, that would definitely help. I can only get my hands on some square stuff. So first step is to basically round all the corners. And once we have all the corners rounded, we're going to cut an angle into the back portion of the body and this will be kind of the tail or the the butt of the pupa and you just kind of want to shape it into kind of a grubby little pupa kind of shape. I will say too it's best to start off with a uh, piece of balsa wood that's larger than you think you need. It's always easier to shave it down than it is to somehow add balsa wood back on. There we go, and that's kind of the shape that we're, we're looking for. Then we're going to cut a, another notch in the front of the body. Kind of like a popper head, a small little popper head. Just like that, a little bit of an angle. And you can kind of measure it against your little nymph hook just to kind of gauge the size. You want the body portion to be about two-thirds of the size of the hook and about a third hanging off the back. And I've kind of shaped the body just a little bit more there to make it look like a little grubby pupa. Now we need to cut in the... Well, actually here we're going to shave it a little bit more. There we go. Now we're ready to kind of cut in the keel. What this is going to do is kind of help the fly ride correctly and stay upright. So we're cutting at a kind of at a curved angle. We're shaving slightly more material off the bottom of the body at an angle, leaving a little bit more material on the top of the body. And if you need to shorten up the fly a little bit, you can shave a little bit off the front. Give it a quick measure again. Still a little bit long. So I'm just going to cut a little bit more off the front. Like I said, it's best to do this little by little until you get really proficient and good at this, and then you can do them probably a lot quicker than I'm doing them. But I take my time slowly carving them. All I'm doing is kind of rounding as many of those angled portions of the body to make it as round and as lifelike as possible. That's pretty close. I'm just shortening it a little bit. Now the next thing to do is use a, a Dremel. I like to use a small little stone. If you use a sanding attachment, that'll work too, but it'll take off a lot of balsa wood real quick. So these little stones are fine enough where it just takes off just a little bit. And basically we're just smoothing the body at this point and taking out any of the kind of angled flat faces we made with the razor blade. The smoother you can get it here, the better the fly is going to look in the end. Of course it gets smaller as you go along too, and a little bit more difficult to work with, but it's not too bad. And 
here I'll uh, lay a hook next to the body just to kind of show you about the size that we're looking for. There you go, about two two thirds on the shank of the hook and about a third hanging off the back for the tail or the butt, whatever you want to call it. Now the next step is to cut the groove in the underside of the fly. This groove will allow us to mount it to the shank of the hook. And the groove you want to cut on the underside, which is the flatter portion, but also the narrower portion. You can see there with that keel, it's a little bit narrower on the bottom than it is up on the top of the fly. So steady fingers, steady hands for this part. You just want to cut a small little groove or a notch that's just barely large enough to slip the shank of the hook in there. Make it too deep, won't ride right, won't look right. So just enough to uh, let the shank of the hook sit in there. I mean, literally, it's like a millimeter. Just enough. I usually cut kind of at a downward angle on each side just to peel out a little bit of material. Now, once you are got your groove cut, we're ready to mount it on to the hook. And we're going to start with the Daiichi. I'm using a nymph hook, a 1530, in either a size 12 or a 14. Use your little Dremel stone to just rough up the shank of the hook. This will help keep the fly from rotating, and flopping around from side to side. It gives the thread something to stick to. And we're just going to take some Vivas dot thread in black, and we're just going to lay a rough, rough and bumpy layer of thread, the opposite of what you do for, for most flies. This one we want to give that body something to glue to, a little bit of surface area. So leave it rough and bumpy. And you could just whip finish real quick. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be pretty. And we're going to apply some super glue to the shank of the hook. Just a little bit. Everybody knows how far super glue go. Just a little bit will make it stick. And lay the body onto the shank of the hook. Nice and centered. Now you want to leave a little bit of room by the eye of the hook. That way we can tie in our antenna and our legs. I left just barely enough. That is about the minimum amount that you want to leave. So uh, if you're new to tying these, leave yourself a little bit more room than that. That's about a hook eye's length. That's the minimum that you need. And now we're ready to get out the markers. You can add a little bit of super glue if you need to. Be careful adding super glue at this point because I got a little bit on the back side of the body that I had to dremel off later in the video. So it's best to not apply super glue after you've put the body on. And to color the body, we're just going to use permanent markers. Your favorite kind of permanent marker will work Sharpie, Prismacolor, Copic, you know, whatever, whatever permanent markers you like. And we're going to tie olive green pupa here. So I always start with the light colors first. So I'm just going to color the back half of this pupa in a green olivey color. And I'll kind of tie the forward end, kind of the gills of the fly with an orange color. You can also use brown or cream. Then we color the top and sides of the pupa with black. But you can change this up. You can Use whatever colors you like. Now we're going to apply some resin. Now I'm using UV resin in this video, but that is not what you want to use to fish them. So we're just using UV resin in this video just to make it quick and kind of show you the look of the fly. What you want to use is a two-part epoxy. And you want to apply it in thin coats and layers, little by little. So you do a initial layer, just enough to coat the fly. Um, let it dry, let it cure. You'll come back over it with the finishing layer of epoxy and uh, 
a little bit thicker and you can basically even out all the lumps and bumps on the body but like I said in this video we're using UV resin the UV cure light just to save time so I can show you basically how to how to brush it on how to coat it and how to how to rotate it but um, this is not what you want to do like I said if you're gonna fish them you do want to use epoxy I'm just finishing up curing it real quick and what you're looking for is a nice glossy smooth body I'll help it ride nice in the water too also keeps the balsa wood from soaking up water. Now we're going to take our ADOT Vivas thread and we're going to tie it in right up at the eye. You see there I didn't leave much room. We'll get it done but you do want to leave a little bit more room at home when you're tying them. We're going to take some 8 pound Maxima Chameleon. We're going to tie in the kind of the antenna first and we're going to tie this in with a little figure 8 knots here with our thread and we're going to take this piece of Maxima as far back to the body as we can so I'll kind of lift it up and I'll pull it back and I'll bite down with my thread. And we're going to come in with a second piece of chameleon. We're going to tie this one in front of that first piece and these will actually be the back legs then we take that piece, we rotate it down and under those first, that first piece of maximum we tied in. Now I forgot to say I did jump my thread back to the body as well. So we're going to tie this, this back portion in behind that first set of legs. So the first set of legs never really, or antenna or whatever you want to call them, they never really move. They stay in the same place. But that second one we tied in, even though we tied it in front of those legs, we're going to pull it back behind. Then we'll tie the thread also behind that first set of legs as well. I'm just kind of making sure these are secure. I didn't have much room, so I'm kind of finagling everything here a little bit, fighting with that Maxima. But there we go, we got it done. And you just whip finish real quick. Apply a little bit of super glue to all of that. I skipped that portion here because I was just in a hurry. Now we're going to trim those back legs just a little bit longer than the body. And the front antenna or whatever you want to call those. We're going to trim those a little bit shorter. Just like that. Now when this fly rides in the water, it pushes a little bit of a wake. And that's uh, what triggers those fish to eat. That is the ISMO pupa. Cool little fly. 